What's up everybody, it's Sean here, here today to give you guys a review of the Air Jordan 7 Retro in this cardinal colorway. Today's video is brought to you by the Drops app by Soul Savvy. In today's sneaker landscape, sneaker restocks for shoes like this happen all the time, but because of our busy schedules, they're very, very easy to miss. So that's where the Drops app by Soul Savvy comes in. It gives you personalized alerts that go straight to your phone that notify you when the shoes that you want in your size are available. So this app really simplifies the whole process of buying shoes for retail. All you have to do is log into the app and set your preferences. For example, certain keywords like for this one, Air Jordan 7 or Cardinal, and then input your size. And that's all that you really need to do. Once these shoes restock, the alerts will go straight to your phone. So it sounds really simple, but it really, really is that easy. So if you guys are interested to learn more about Drops by Soul Savvy, I'll add a link down below in the description box for you guys to check out and download on your phones or search up Drops by Soul Savvy in the App Store and stop paying resale prices for the shoes that you're looking for. So this right here is the iconic Cardinal Air Jordan 7. One of the original colorways of the Jordan 7 that dropped back in 1992, their first retro happened in 2006, which is during the early days of my sneaker collecting, and I owned a pair of those 2006 retros. Fast forward five years later, they would retro again in 2011. And then finally, here we are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Air Jordan 7 silhouette. And Jordan brand, fittingly, have brought these back one more time. So I believe these have already dropped in Europe. Don't quote me on that, but they're already online on Nike Canada's website, which Nike Canada stock is tied to Nike Europe's operations. But I believe there's going to be a wider release here in North America later on this month. So the retail price for this shoe is set for 210 US dollars or 270 here in Canada. And the official colorway for this shoe is white, black, cardinal red, and chutney. So overall, based on what I've read online, the silhouette of these Jordan 7s are supposed to be closer to the OG look from 1992. So I don't own a pair of the originals, so I can't really compare it head to head, but the overall shape of the shoe looks pretty nice to me. It has this nice sleek appearance to it, and it tapers well at the toe box. So diving into the details of this shoe, so the upper of this pair is constructed primarily out of this white colored leather. On the toe box, the leather overlay here is done in a very tumbled style. And while this tumbled look has a very synthetic appearance to it, the overall feel of this leather feels decently soft to the touch. Overlaid on top of this leather, we have more of a smooth leather, which covers portions of the upper of the shoe. But then underneath this, we have more of that tumbled white leather. And we have these different sizes of perforations found on both sides of the sneaker. This being an Air Jordan 7, of course we have that signature flap or side wing, and this is covered in the smooth leather on the outer edges, with more of that tumbled leather in the center. And embroidered in the center, we have this chutney or gold colored Jumpman, along with more perforations surrounding it. And beneath this, skipping over this gap, we have this synthetic black colored Nubuck, and the bottom of the heel is covered in more of that smooth white colored leather. At the bottom, stitched in the middle, we have this triangular rubber overlay with the number 23 along with hits of red and black, and we have a chutney or gold colored pull tab attached to the top of the heel. In terms of laces, so these only come with one lace option and they're just your standard flat style lace in white. Moving on though, so underneath this, the Jordan 7 is constructed in the sock-like or booty-like fit, so we have this inner sleeve which is formed by the tongue and the heel of the shoe. So the tongue here is constructed out of this white colored neoprene. We have these perforations running up the tongue. And on the top, the neoprene here is left smooth, but we have Air Jordan branding embroidered across in black. So the back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe is lined in this cardinal red colored neoprene. And you can see from above, this entire inner portion of the shoe is one piece, which is what gives the shoe that very sock-like feel. As for the insoles, so these come with a polyurethane foam insole. It's lined in a black colored textile on top, and we have Nike Air branding stamped on the heel in cardinal red. So the upper of the Jordan 7 sits atop this polyurethane foam midsole, which is painted primarily in black. We have these triangular peaks, which is visible on the heel and the forefoot. This is painted in a combination of cardinal red and white, and then encapsulated within the midsole, but not visible to the eye, there is Nike Air technology for cushioning. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so this is your standard Jordan 7 outsole. This is constructed primarily out of a black colored rubber, but we have hits of chutney and cardinal red, along with the iconic large jumpman found on the heel of the outsole. So that breaks down the look and the construction of these Jordan 7 Cardinals. And for those wondering about sizing, so I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. And when I found these on Nike Canada's website, the size 10 was sold out already. So I got these in a size nine and a half. So going a half size down in these, they gave me a very nice snug one-to-one -one fit. But I do warn you, if you do have wider feet, you probably want to stick true to size for this shoe. 
If, however, you do have narrow feet or normal width feet, and you prefer more of a snug one-to-one -one fit, then you can definitely go half size down, but if you don't want to risk it and you like more breathing room for your toes, then stick true to size for this shoe. Moving on to the comfort, so the Jordan 7, at least in my opinion, is a pretty decently comfortable shoe for a retro Jordan. It's not going to be super soft and cushioned like modern day Jordans are, but especially when I compare this to an Air Jordan 6 for example, which I find to be very uncomfortable for me, the Jordan 7 is quite the step up. It gives you a good balance of firmness and a little bit of cushioning underfoot, and I really like how the neoprene booty hugs well to your foot. It really has that connected one-to-one -one fit, and it was hugging and compressing the sides of my feet, but not in a painful and uncomfortable way. So again, it comes down to personal preference. If you don't really like that form-fitting fit, then you probably won't like how the Jordan 7s fit on you. So best bet I would recommend is trying them on in store first before committing to buying these. Last but not least, in terms of the quality and the craftsmanship. So first off, material quality, I thought it was pretty solid. This leather, while it wasn't the best leather I've seen on a Jordan shoe, I still find it to be above average. So we have a mix of a very tumbled leather and the smooth white leather, and both leathers are genuine leather, and they feel pretty thick as well. It's not a super cheap thin leather, which I was fully expecting these to be, so it was a little bit of a pleasant surprise when I got these in hand. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, I thought my pair was pretty solid. The stitch job on the upper was flawless to me. I didn't see any glue stains on my pair at all. So it was great to see Jordan Brand give us solid craftsmanship on this pair at least. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet, lace these up, and I'll show you guys how these look. This might be a bit of a hot take, but I think the Cardinal 7, to me at least, this is my favorite colorway or OG colorway of the Air Jordan 7. Part of the reason is because of nostalgia, I started just collecting around that time when the 2006 Retro released, and this was probably one of my first 5 or 10 Jordans that I added to my collection. So because of that, this is a pretty special pickup to me, and I'm glad to see these finally return to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Jordan 7 silhouette. I wouldn't be surprised though if these sat on shelves and eventually were put on sale, but crazier things have happened, who knows, if you guys are fans of the Cardinal 7 then maybe don't risk it and pick these up on the release date. But let me know in the comment section down below, are you guys fans of this Cardinal 7? Are you a fan of the Jordan 7 in general? I know it doesn't have the hype of a Jordan 1, a 3, or a 4, or even a 5, but I'm sure there's tons of Jordan 7 fans out there, so let's drop a comment down below and let's talk about this. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8, follow my Twitter account at sean.go, and visit my website as well at seangoca So until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review, and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.